welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Now today I'm taking you back to the reign of King Henry VIII. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 11th of December 1539, Anne of Cleves and her retinue were received at Graveline, just a few miles outside of Calais, by Lord Lyle, who was the deputy of Calais at the time. Chronicler Edward Hall records her reception on that day, and he gives a really detailed account, which I'm going to share with you now. The 11th day of December, at the turnpike, on the said graveline, was the Lady Anne of Cleve, received by the Lord Lyle, deputy of the town of Calais, and with the spears and horsemen belonging to the retinue there, all being fresh and warlike apparelled. And so, marching toward Calais a mile and more from the town, met Her Grace the Earl of Southampton, great admiral of England, and apparelled in a coat of purple velvet cut on cloth of gold and tied with great aglets and trefoils of gold to the number of 400. And Bordrick wise, he wore a chain at the which did hang a whistle of gold set with rich stones of a great value. And in this company, 30 gentlemen of the king's household, very richly apparelled with great and massy chains, and in especial Sir Francis Bryan and Sir Thomas Seymour's chains were of great value and strange fashion. Beside this, the Lord Admiral had a great number of gentlemen in blue velvet and crimson satin, and his yeomen in damask of the same colours, and the mariners of his ship in satin of bridges, which I suspect might be Bruges, both coats and slops of the same colours. Which Lord Admiral, with low obeisance, welcomed her, and so brought her into Calais by the lantern gate, where the ships lay in the haven garnished with their banners, pencils, and flags, pleasantly to behold. And at her entry was shot such a peal of guns that all the retinue much marvelled at it. And at her entry into the town, the mayor of the town presented her with a hundred marks in gold. And before the staple hall stood the merchants of the staple, well apparelled, which likewise presented her with a hundred sovereigns of gold in a rich purse, which heartily thanked them. And so she rode to the king's place called the Exchequer, and there she lay fifteen days for lack of prosperous wind, during which time goodly jousts and costly banquets were made to her for her solace and recreation. Now Anne's brother, William, Duke of Cleves, had signed the marriage treaty promising Anne to King Henry VIII as his fourth wife on the 4th of September 1539. He'd then sent it on to England where it was ratified and concluded by early October, being signed by the King's commissioners on the 4th of October 1539. Henry VIII then arranged with Emperor Charles V for a safe conduct for Anne to travel through imperial territory and ordered the equipping of 10 of his finest ships to carry Anne and her entourage from Calais to England. Anne left Dusseldorf on the 26th of November 1539, reaching Antwerp on the 3rd of December. It was a slow and difficult journey due to the winter conditions. She reached Bruges on the 7th of December and then made her way onto Dunkirk and finally to Graveline and Calais. Anne was meant to set sail from Calais on the 13th of December, but as Edward Hall mentions, the weather wasn't playing ball and her departure had to be postponed. On the morning of the 27th of December 1539, Anne and her entourage were finally able to leave Calais. They landed safely at Deal in Kent at 5pm the same day and were met by Sir Thomas Cheney, who escorted the party to Deal Castle to rest after their long journey. There, Anne was visited by the King's good friend, Charles Brandon, Duke of Suffolk, and his wife, Catherine Willoughby, and also the Bishop of Chichester and various knights and ladies. After rest and refreshments, Anne was escorted on to Dover Castle to spend the night there. Anne was informed that she'd be meeting the king, her future husband, at Greenwich Palace at a formal reception in a few days' time. But Henry VIII had other ideas, and Anne was to be taken by surprise on New Year's Day while resting at Rochester Castle. 
Their first meeting didn't really go to plan, but that's another story. And I'll give you a link to my video on that. You'll be able to find that in the description. Tomorrow, I'll be introducing you to a skilled soldier who was good friends with Elizabeth's favorite, the Earl of Essex, and had to go into hiding at one point after angering the queen. Do make sure you're subscribed, click there, and that you've hit the bell so you don't miss that video. Also on this day in history, the 11th of December, 1608, one of Queen Elizabeth I's former ladies and a lover of Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester, was buried at St. Margaret's Church in Westminster. Her name was Douglas Sheffield, and she was the mother of Leicester's illegitimate son, Sir Robert Dudley. Find out more about Douglas, who claimed to be Leicester's legal wife in last year's video. You'll find a link to that in the description too. Thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and leave a comment if you wish. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.